All right, folks, special Starbase summary here. It's a Starship launch summary. You are going to want to toggle the commentary and go back over to the ambient track. So here is what we're going to do. Kicking it off with Jay DeShetler's shot here. This is from our south property, about a mile, a little over a mile away from the pad to the south. What I'm going to do is try to explain these camera angles and sort of the setup behind it and then go back and watch the video again with the ambient track so you can hear the sounds of the rocket from all of these microphones. This shot here is a uh, electronic positioner over on our trailer at Dangerlot. Massive thanks to SpaceX for letting us deploy our live stream trailer there at this about, what is that, 14, 1700 feet away from the base of the rocket there. Again, settings, change back to Klingon if you want to listen, or you should listen to the rocket audio. This shot, tower on the right, is going to be from our North Beach site, again, just over a mile away from the rocket. Uh, this camera actually mounted in a dome down position. Uh, for tracking cameras that are going to track the whole launch, we need to mount them dome up so they can pan, or I guess so they can tilt all the way up to vertical, and that runs out of tilt because it cannot tilt up past uh, the dome that protects the camera. This shot here is me. This is from seven miles away. I'm running a robotic tracking rig on the roof of the Margaritaville Hotel. I'm about 165 feet off the ground, fighting that haze. You really do see the difference between those close-in danger shots, the one-mile shots, the 1,400, 1,700 feet shots, and then the haze of uh, seven miles away there. But we have a fiber line, so it's a good place to get a nice, uh, a nice feed back to y'all. Fantastic on the engines there. Look at all the engines and the detail you can see. Still fighting a little bit of haze when you're missing the contrast of the darker ship and the darker blue of the sky, but as the stack... Yes! <laughs> Got a little uh, a little shock cone there for just a second. As the ship gets up higher into the air, you get out of that ground haze, that humidity down near the ground. Sky gets a little bluer, sky gets a little clearer. Um, also, it's leaning away from us. I like this angle because from a like a river property or the sites over on the highway near the production site rockets sort of going away from you here on South Padre Island which is actually north of the launch pad I get a little bit of a side angle the rockets not just going straight away from me but we can see the context of the side of the vehicle here but you're still it's that contrast between the uh, dark tile system the TPS and the blue sky is a little tough and I want to try and figure this out in the future the ship engines sort of blend together after it gets down range. I don't know if I can uh, tap the exposure or something to try and make that a little bit more defined on the engines. But again, starts off at seven miles of atmosphere and there's really not a lot of uh, substitute for just getting closer and removing that air between you and the rocket. This is going to keep on going down range. Uh, it's going to be quite a bit of a long track here because with the long lens, I was running... What was that lens? This is 150, 600. It's one of those Sigma lenses, and I had it set to around 500 millimeters, and it was on a 2x teleconverter. So you take 500, double it, and it's also micro four thirds going into the uh, camera itself. So, I mean, what is it? Somewhere around 2,000, a little bit over 2,000 effective millimeters there. There's the hot staging, by the way, and the flip of the booster. If you switch over and you listen to the commentary, you can hear some of our back channel comms, including me talking about what I'm doing uh, in the ambient track. So it's like still kind of a commentary track, but I'm like, I got the booster. I'm staying with the booster. The ship can just do its thing. <laughs> I'm not going to see the ship for much longer. But here, even though it's not a catch, we knew that the booster was bound for the Gulf. So we wanted to keep an eye on this. There's a behind-the-scenes video. If you're a member of the channel, uh, we've been releasing some of these behind-the-scenes videos. I need to record a behind-the-scenes videos of what my, my hands have to do during this track because it's really weird. Normally with a rocket launch, it, it goes up. I'm doing this with an Xbox controller, by the way, and so I've got the thumbstick, and I'm like up, 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 and then the rocket gets going faster, and I have to increase the rate by pulling on the right trigger, which speeds up my rate so that the head starts to move faster for a given stick input. And it goes up, 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 and then it starts to arc over, and there's like an inversion period, and then it goes down, 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 and I have to switch my thumb to very gently go down instead of up. And then during the boost back, it's going, it's, you know, you get the staging, and my thumb is sort of going down, and I have to switch again. I need to invert again, and so there's always a little jump whenever I have to switch directions on the thumb just because the motion isn't exactly as smooth as I'd like to be. So the booster boosts back and goes up again, and then it inverts again, and I have to start going down again. 
So uh, keeping the booster in frame, you're like, wow, it's, it's just so easy. Why don't you just point the camera at the rocket? Um, you don't really get a sense. Look at the hot staging ring, by the way. That's the hot staging ring that's separated, and then it's sort of highlighted when you get the contrast of that exhaust there. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the, the, the motions here, especially the directional flips where you have to go past zero and go into like a positive tilt or a, a negative tilt rate and you're doing that transition period, you get a little bit of a, a jump. The other thing that gets me here, again, please go listen to the, to the commentary or the non-commentary. Go listen to the ambient track for all of this. The other thing that gets me, I really don't have a sense. I'm locked into the screen. I'm staring at this monitor. I got two monitors. This is my tight shot. Then I got a wide shot in case I lose it in the tight shot. I have no context for how fast this thing is moving. It's just move my thumb. And if I'm not keeping up, give it some more rate. Tap the trigger. Move my thumb. I need more rate. Move the thumb. Need more rate. And this thing is speeding up and speeding up and speeding up. Watch it past the hot staging ring. That's the hot staging ring. The drag of the hot staging ring, the massive drag ratio of the hot staging ring, makes the hot staging ring slam on the brakes as it gets in the thicker atmosphere. This booster is hauling right now. It is falling out of the sky. Watch the clouds. Bam! <laughs> and that's the first time where I really had any context at all as to how fast that thing was moving. But just keeping the rates on the sticks such that I can keep this thing in frame on the, whatever, it's 2,000 and change millimeter lens, was ridiculously tough. Now, as we get back down again, look at that! It <laughs> had another, like, a reverse shock cone. But it gets into the haze again, and I'm lacking the contrast of the, the dark ship, or the, the white, like, I don't have the blue and white, so I, I lose it. We're going to back off here. This is my spotting camera. Luckily, the spotting camera gets it, even though I couldn't see it in the tight camera anymore. When that happens, I'll just constant rate. I'm like, all right, just keep the stick where it's supposed to be, and uh, that's where the rocket should be going. But you see me sort of overcorrect, end up in the water, and then go back up again. This shot is from D. D was uh, tracking it manually today from the roof of the hotel as well. And D saw the explosion with the old Marco and eyeballs, and then <laughs> went over to get it. But uh, look at this. This is from Beach. This is the same camera as Beach 3 when it took off, about a mile north of the pad. And that's the explosion of the booster. Now we're going to jot that down and see exactly where that dune is in the, the top of the little dune there. And then we'll, we'll mark that on that camera so in the future we can zoom in a little bit more. And if they're putting a booster out in the Gulf, hopefully that doesn't happen very often, but we have some context as to where that might be happening. This is a drone shot from Jerry Pike. This is our river property about four miles away from the pad, just on the edge of the, uh, the exclusion zone over here. And Jerry had the drone up. Now, this is super important. This is just outside the TFR, and we were in direct contact and coordinating with SpaceX. You can't just be out there with 50 people randomly flying drones around. Um, Jerry has a ton of experience operating in a very busy environment, and we actually restricted our drone flights to the area immediately around our property to make sure it's safe. It's going to be a problem if a bunch of people show up out there with the drone they just bought and think they're going to do that. But uh, we take it very seriously. We communicate directly with SpaceX and tell them our plans and exactly where we're going to be and what we're going to be doing. We're bringing it back all the way over here to Danger Lot again. This is a slow motion camera, remote triggered, that D set at Danger Lot. Uh, we have that on the on the network. We have a point to point radio, so from the roof of the hotel, we can communicate in real time with the cameras that are deployed here. And D was able to trigger the high frame rate slow motion right before liftoff. So on the laptop, log into the camera, hit the button to trigger the recording, and uh, then go off to do your other things you're tracking. But this is a remote triggered uh, slow motion camera about, I need to look it up. It's, it's 14, 1700, it's one of those two numbers. I need to go and figure out exactly what the number is. About a thousand, thousand and a half feet away. So here is another remote triggered slow motion camera. This is in the SpaceX Dune area. This is under a thousand feet away from the launch pad. Tough spot here, but look at the shock waves going. From the bottom to the top of the camera, you can see shockwaves going, especially if you look at the body of the booster. Or, sorry, the body of the ship there. You have that nice, dark heat shield tile. Um, initially, you just see the shockwaves going across the screen. A little bit of debris getting kicked up there. That's especially high as well. But, uh, again, that was a remote-triggered slow-motion camera. 
tough because the plume, the dust blocks its view. You sort of have to aim way high, and then you don't get that pa the tower passing shot. Here's D's manual track over from the roof of the Margaritaville Hotel. And uh, this is D on a tripod recording in slow motion with a ridiculously large lens, larger than the one I was using over on the robotic tracker. Uh, but D was an absolute trooper here. Look at the exhaust. Do you see the fast exhaust in like the energy waves going down through the exhaust and then the, the plume, the actual, let's say vapor, it's not s smoke really, the plume you can see is moving at one rate and then the fire going through that plume and then the shock waves traveling through the plume are moving at a completely different rate. It's mind blowing how that looks. Here's D's hot staging. You see the fire coming out of the sides of the uh, hot staging ring. Remember here they blocked some holes on the hot staging ring to try and uh, influence the direction of the booster. And we see the booster sort of flipping nose up. Got some little uh, directional venting there. And here's D's shot in slow motion of it coming through the cows. Flip back and forth. This is slow motion. I think this was about 120 FPS, if I'm not mistaken. I'll correct it in the comments if I'm mistaken. I'll ask D. And uh, mine was real time. So look at mine going through the clouds. It is tearing through the clouds. And then here in slow motion, it looks like it's going slow. Well, that, that's how slow motion works. It's, it's slowed down. <laughs> so you, could, you, you have more time to enjoy it. I guess, but it is absolutely tearing through the clouds. This is a fantastic camera emplacement. This camera emplacement was built by Jada Shetler, um, somebody who's been doing work with us for a long time. And this is an armored camera box placed uh, under a thousand feet away from the bottom of the rocket. Dan, our guy out in the field, Dan, got this all set up and tested out and actually deployed it for Jay. Jay was not on site, uh, but Jay built the box and came up with the instructions on how to operate it. And then Dan got this thing ready to go and put it in the field to catch that shot for Jay. Uh, here is another shot over from the Dunes area. Massive thanks to SpaceX for letting us put this camera out here. But look, look at the plume of the rocket. Those mock diamonds coming back together are ridiculous. There's the deluge splash. Good timing there. Big old plume starts out with steam, then turns a little brown. And look at the shock. I would not want to be anywhere around that thing when it takes off. <laughs> Good night, Irene. All right, folks. Hey, it's a, it's a flight recap there. My name's John. Uh, please go back, switch it to the Klingon track. It's the little settings gear. Change it to the Klingon. There's no ambient option, so we just put it under Klingon. There's nobody speaking Klingon there. But listen to the sounds of that rocket. Hope you enjoyed the recap. We'll be back with regular Starbase summaries uh, here in a couple more days. And we appreciate you watching. <laughs>